Section 5.5 deals with adding and subtracting polynomials. The key thing to remember in this section is understanding that you cannot combine like terms. Really, we want to figure out which terms are like terms and combine them. But now, not only are we going to have to worry about them having the same variable, but we're going to have to worry about them having the same variable to the same exponent. When things have the same variable to the same exponent, we can add and subtract them. When they do not, we have to leave them separate. So we're going to talk about adding monomials. Monomials just means a single term. Subtracting them, then we're going to talk about adding polynomials and subtracting polynomials. So when we talk about polynomials, we're talking about something that has multiple terms. Like maybe it has x plus x cubed plus x to the fifth or something. It'll have more than one term if it's a polynomial. Poly, poly the prefix just means many. Mono, the prefix means one. So, in figure A, the heights of the Seattle Space Needle and the Eiffel Tower in Paris are giving. Using rules from arithmetic, we can find the difference by subtracting the two numbers. If we take 984 minus 607, we realize that the Eiffel Tower is 377 feet higher than the Seattle Space Needle. So, if we did these in Greek formulas, where we said that this was equal to x squared minus 3x plus 2 feet, and this was equal to 5x minus 10 feet, it's not as easy to do that subtraction. Things don't line up. We can't really solve that problem in the traditional sense of this number minus this number tells me what the difference is. So, in this section we're going to discuss the algebraic rules that are used to do this. We're going to start with monomials one term and build towards polynomials having more than one term like what we saw in the previous slide. So when we talk about monomials, we look for things that have the same variable to the same power. These two are like terms because they both have x to an understood first power. These two are not like terms because this one has an x and this one has an a. These two are like terms because they both have y to the third power y to the third power. These two are not like terms because this one has y to the third and this one has y to the second. Finally, these two are like terms because this has x to the first, y to the second. This has x to the first, y to the second. Whereas these two are not like terms because this has x to the first, y to the second. This has x to the second, y to the first. So in the like term column, everything has same variable to same power even if there's two variables. Still, same variables to same powers. In the unlike terms, either the variables are different, the powers are different, or I have the wrong power on the wrong variable. These can all be added or combined. Negative 7x and 15x gives me 8x. 4y cubed and 16y cubed gives me 20y cubed. 1 half xy squared minus 1 third xy squared gives me 1 sixth xy squared. Don't get too deep into that. There's fraction math involved that I'm doing quickly that I'm not expecting you to follow necessarily. These over here must stay as they are. So negative 7x plus 15a stays exactly negative 7x plus 15a. 4y cubed plus 16y squared stays 4y cubed plus 16y squared. When I say stays, they cannot be put together. They're not like terms that can be combined. So for example, if I had 4y plus 5y, I keep the y since they're like terms with the same variable to the same power, and I'd add the coefficients, 4 plus 5, to get a final answer of 9y. Here this is an 8, this is an understood 1, so I keep that x squared and I add the coefficients, 8 plus 1, to get 9x squared. Similarly, if we have things like this, where we have multiple different terms being added together, we can only combine the ones that are like terms. So we can't combine this 3a with 4b, but I can combine 3a and 6a to get 9a. I can't combine this 4b with this 6a, but I can combine 4b and 3b to get 7b. When I get all the a's together and all the b's together, I cannot combine the a's and b's. I need to keep like terms together and keep unlike terms separate. Similarly, if I have 4cd cubed plus 9cd cubed, since both of these have the same variables to the same powers, I can add them. 4 plus 9 gives me 13 to the same variable and power, cd cubed. So, perform the following additions. In the first one, 
They both have x to the fourth, so x to the fourth is going to be the variable in power of my answer. I'm going to add the coefficients. 4 plus 81 gives me 85. For the next one, each of these does have x squared y squared. So each of the three terms being added has the same variables to the same power. 8 plus 6 is 14, plus an understood 1 is 15. So my final answer would be 15x squared y squared. For the final one here, this 32c squared can be combined with this 4c squared. 4 plus 32 is 36, still c squared. But this 10c has to stay separate and cannot be combined because that 10c is only c to the first power. So looking through these examples, in the first example again, we get 85x to the fourth because they are the same power, they are the same variable, so we can just combine the coefficients. For the next one again, all of them are same variables to same power, so we just combine 8 plus 6 plus 1 to get a final answer of 15x squared y squared. For the final one down here, note that this 10c is not a like term, so it's off to the side, not in purple, not being combined. The 4 and the 32 do combine to give me 36c squared, but I need to say plus 10c without actually doing anything to add that 10c. Since it's not a like term, it must stay separate. When we're subtracting, it's the same general idea. Just recognize the subtraction symbol. We need to treat it as a negative. So for this first problem, 8x to the second minus 3x to the second Really, what we're doing is we're taking 8 minus 3 to get 5, still x to the second. When we do 9 for 6xy minus 9xy, it's 6 minus 9, which gives me negative 3xy. Negative 3r minus 5 minus 4r, these two are the like terms that can be combined. Negative 3 and negative 4 combined to give me negative 7r. I keep the negative 5 separate because it's not a like term. Here, when I do 0.9x squared, the like term to that is this negative 0.5x squared. 0.9 minus 0.5 gives me 0.4x squared. I can take this negative 1.2x, combine it with this negative 0.4. That's going to give me negative 1.6x. For polynomials, I start out in parentheses with a bunch of things that may need to be multiplied by a negative, may need to have something else distributed amongst them. But basically, if all I'm doing is saying plus, it's really like adding one to each of them, so I can just kind of take away the parentheses. So when I'm doing polynomials here, since there's a plus sign, it's an understood plus one, anything times plus one is just itself. So really, I can drop the parentheses from this right away. And then I want to say what goes with what. So dropping the parentheses, I get this list of terms. When I want to figure out the ones that go together, 3x squared and 2x squared go together. Negative 3x and positive 7x go together. And positive 2 and negative 4 go together. Notice they're in the same positions within the parentheses. So first term is the x squared term. Second term is the x term. Last term is the no variable term. I want to combine the things that are alike and keep the things that are not alike separate. So when I combine these x squared terms, I get 5x squared. When I combine these x terms, I get 4x. And when I combine these numbers, I get negative 2. That gives me my final answer of 5x squared plus 4x minus 2, which I got from combining these two polynomials, which were originally in parentheses. You can also see them as vertical addition to keep all your columns straight and make sure that you're only adding x squared with x squared, x with x, and number with number. Just know there could be times where, for instance, you don't have an x term here. If this was just 2x squared minus 4, you'd need to know you were adding 0 to the x term that came above. So make sure you're just not automatically lining things up with the position that are in the parentheses. Make sure that they're getting lined up based on the variable and power that they have. When we subtract polynomials, it's the same general idea, except we can't do the easy step of just dropping the parentheses. This subtraction sign outside really means multiplied by a negative 1. You need to remember to change each and every sign within the parentheses before combining the like terms. Where students most often make a mistake with this is they apply the negative sign to the first term, but they don't switch the next two terms. So this negative outside does make this a negative 3x squared, 
It also changes this negative, changes this positive to a negative 3x, and this negative changes this negative to a positive 2. So when you're subtracting polynomials, that subtraction side outside the parentheses needs to be distributed and applied to each term. So if we want to find each of these differences, the first thing we're going to do is apply this negative. So negative 5x, negative 7. Negative 5x and positive 3x combine to give me negative 2x. Negative 4 and negative 7 combine to give me a negative 11. Same idea here, I'm going to apply this negative, negative 2x squared, negative times a negative gives me positive 6x. Negative 2x squared and positive 3x squared combine to give me 1x squared or just x squared. Negative 4x and positive 6x combine to give me positive 2x, and then there's nothing left to combine with the negative 6, so I just write it at the end, negative 6. My final answer would be x squared minus, or I'm sorry, plus 2x minus 6. For this bottom problem, when I apply the negative, negative times a negative gives me a positive, negative times a negative gives me a positive, negative times a positive gives me a negative. Turns out this is exactly equal and opposite to this once I apply that sign, so these two go away. This is exactly equal and opposite to this when I apply that negative, so these two go away. But this negative 1 and this leftover negative 1 can be combined. Negative 1 and negative 1 combined to give me negative 2. So let's see all that done out. In the first one, we change both signs. We then see what can be combined. 3x minus 5x gives me negative 2x. Negative 4 minus negative 7 gives me negative 11. Here again, we apply the negative sign to the last two. Notice that this sign changes to a positive from a negative. This is the sign that's most likely to cause you problems and make a small mistake that's going to throw off the rest of the problem. Make sure that negative gets applied to each thing inside the parentheses. Once I have it on this line, I can combine this negative 2x squared and this positive 3x squared. That's where they get 1x squared. Negative 4x and positive 6x give me positive 2x. And then the negative 6 just gets brought down. For this problem, again, make sure the negative gets applied to each thing. We can then see a positive t to the third and a negative t to the third go away. A positive 2t squared and a negative 2t squared go away. So it's the negative 1 and negative 1 that combine to give me negative 2. So when I subtract polynomials in vertical form, we add the opposite of the... I've never even heard that word subtract, I guess. The bottom to the... Anyway, basically you take the top, you switch the signs on the bottom if you're, if you're doing subtraction so that they all become the opposite sign, and then you combine them. This is showing when the distributive property comes into play in these. Basically, instead of just multiplying by a negative possibly, we might have to multiply by a whole number or a negative number. Remember again that the key to the distributive property is this gets multiplied by each thing in parentheses. So 3 times 2x is 6x, but don't forget that 3 times 5 is 15. 2 times 4x is 8x, but don't forget that 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Once we have it here where we've done the distribution, this is like the monomial problems we did above, where I just need to make sure that I'm combining the things that are alike. So here the 6x and 8x combine to give me 14x, the 15 and negative 6 combine to give me positive 9. We're going to remove the parentheses and simplify by distributing for each of these. 3 times x squared is 3x squared, 3 times 4x is 12, 2 times x squared is 2x squared, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. So 3x squared and 2x squared combine to give me 5x squared. 12x and negative 8 each are their own terms. They don't have anything to combine with, so I leave them. My final answer would be 5x squared plus 12x minus 8. Here I need to make sure I understand that negative sign is part of what's being distributed. So negative 8 times y squared is negative 8y squared. Negative 8 times negative 2y is positive 16y. Negative 8 times positive 3 is negative 24. On the other side, negative 4 times 2y squared is negative 8y squared. Negative 4 times y is negative 4y. And negative 4 times negative 6 is positive 24. I then want to combine those like terms. So let's see these done out. First one, I use the distributive property. Here's what happens after the distribution. 
I can see that this 3x squared and this 2x squared are the only like terms. So I combine them to get 5x squared, leaving everything else in the problem the same. When I do this part B, after the distribution, negative 8y squared and this negative 8y squared, keep in mind, give me negative 16y squared. This 16y and this negative 4y combined to give me 12y. And negative 24 and positive 24 are equal and opposite. So I just won't have a term at the end with no variable. That's why I end up with negative 16y squared plus 12y.